Hello! Pokemon! You know, Pokemon. It's the biggest franchise of all time. It came out like 20 years ago and everyone's loved it ever since. And despite it being one of the biggest games and franchises of all time, it stayed on a handheld console. Until now! And then it came to the Switch. This year, the first console game ever, Pokemon-wise. And it went horribly wrong. Everyone seemed to hate it, and I didn't understand why. It didn't make any sense. I mean, there were reasons. They got rid of half the Pokemon, and everyone was furious. Bloody furious. Everyone. The internet was on fire with fury. They'd gotten rid of Bulbasaur. You know, from such shows as... Pokemon. So why am I talking about it today? Well, I also do not like Pokemon Sword and Shield for the Nintendo Switch. However, it's not because they got rid of all the Pokemon. I actually couldn't care less about that. I haven't played Pokemon since Blue, which was the first one. I was very young and it. I, I love Pokemon for the anime and the card game. And even though I am a game player for some reason, I never picked up the games. But I have found out why recently. It was like a crazy revelation and I'll get to that further on in the video. But I want to explain why somehow, despite me being the one that was like, you people need to calm down about your bloody Pokemon not being in Pokemon, I ended up not liking this game. The thing is, up until about the 20 hour mark, I was really enjoying this game. Loving it in fact. Really enjoying my time with it. So let's just go through, point by point, what happened. Pokemon, what have you done? So the game starts, and initially, the graphics and everything, and the, just the way the game looks is lovely. Everything's charming, and everyone looks cute and funny, and it's Pokemon. You can't just look at it and be like, that doesn't look good, because it does. It's charming. It's, 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 it's Pokemon. As the Pokemon trainer always does, he sets out on his adventure and off you go, catching Pokemon. And that, believe it or not, is where Pokemon shines. Catching Pokemon, training Pokemon, seeing all the new guys. And even though I was a Gen 1-er, as the cool kids would say, I really enjoyed seeing the new Pokemon. Uh, there's Nickit, which is a fox who's kind of like a thief. And then he changes into a bigger fox called Thievil. To be honest, it's not the greatest naming convention in the world, but it's cool. I liked all the new Pokemon. The music's in the same vein. I really enjoyed the music. It really sets the tone for what Pokemon is. You're just this little kid going on your adventure, catching pocket monsters, and it's all lovely. The environments are cool as well. It's meant to be, it's meant to be British. We're in Britain, but it's not Britain because it's Pokemon, so it's Galar. Galar. Gallery. Gala. Doodons. A new addition to Pokemon Sword and Shield is that you can actually see the Pokemon that you're catching. In the old ones, you would just go in the bushes and then you'd go, Ah! You're being attacked by a Pokemon! And then the Pokemon would appear and then you'd either beat it to death or you'd catch it and enslave it in your Pokeball. But in this, you get to see them and choose if you want to attack it or not. Which is cool, it saves a lot of time, and I will say that Pokemon Sword and Shield is very streamlined. Every time you have a battle, whatever Pokemon you have with you will all level up at the same time. You don't have to keep on swapping them out and leveling them up individually, which sounds like a nightmare. Am I a Pokemon fan? So there you are, on your journey, you've caught a few Pokemon, you're going through the world, you've said goodbye to mum, and she's gone, goodbye, I guess, here's some, here's some quids. And then you come to uh, arguably the biggest selling point in Pokemon Sword and Shield, the wild area, which is a an area where you can move the camera. <gasps> Revolutionary! You can move the bloody camera! It was very exciting for all. And then we got to the wild area and it was, yeah, you could move the camera. And everywhere else you can't, just this certain section. And there are Pokemon everywhere and some of them you can't catch. Which is not Pokemon. I mean, you know, that's that's the game. Don't take don't take me to a field full of Pokemon and then say, can't catch that one. He's way too big for you. He will kill you. You'd be dead. Don't do it. Reward the players. I it it took me a little while to realise this because I thought maybe it was an Onyx, you know? The big snake made of rocks. I fought him to the point where his life was so low, I killed all my Pokemon in the process. And I was 
went to throw my Pokeball, and it said, you can't do that. They're all dead! Was this for nothing? WAS THIS FOR NOTHING?! Yes, it was. But regardless, it was fun, and there is a big chunk of time in between starting the game and the first gym battle. So there's a lot of time to just go about your Pokemon life. Catching Pokemon, training them. That is Pokemon. I'm gonna say that a lot. Catch Pokemon, train the Pokemon. They evolve. Woo! Pokemon. You want to become a Pokemon master and you have to go to all the gyms and fight the gym leaders, get the badges, and then you're a Pokemon master. Well done. Pat yourself on the back. You've Got all the creatures in your bag. So we're all having a lovely time at this point. We're five hours in, all good. And then we get to the gym battle. And this is when the cracks start to form. The gym battles, which are basically the boss battles of Pokemon, are so easy. They are not challenging. The, the gyms are marked with like, this is the leaf gym. The, the, all the Pokemon will be leaf here, which means go in the wild area, find a fire Pokemon, and then you'll have no problem. Also, if you don't find a fire Pokemon, you'll also have no problem. Because no matter what you do, you'll be overleveled somehow. I don't know how it happens, but you just will be. But I was still optimistic. I was still just like, well, it's the first gym battle. You know, all boss battles in JRPGs are easy. This is basically the, the training thing. This is how this is how boss battles will be. Now you know. Next time, it'll be even harder. So get ready. Spoilers. It wasn't. Still super easy. And still, still I was optimistic. I was like, okay, two gym battles down. There are eight gym battles, surely by the end, because they hype it up, by the end you'll be fighting dragons. dragons! Bloody dragons! You better be ready for that! And like I said, I haven't played the other games, so I don't know if this is exactly how it works, but there's a big tournament or a competition, and there's loads of you, there's loads of Pokemon trainers, and they're all going to these gyms, fighting the gym leader, which is just one dude, and then they get the badge, and then they go off to the next gym leader. There are a lot of Pokemon trainers and this one gym leader. So I guess one by one, we're all just beating this one guy. They hype up these gym leaders like, oh, he's the biggest Pokemon trainer we've got. And everyone just comes and fucking steamrolls the guy. All of them. And I'm meant to be afraid of it. I'm like the last one that fights him and I'm meant to be afraid of it. I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly quaking in my boots because everyone's just walking out going, got my gym badge. He's yeah, just beat him. So I can just picture this guy healing up his Pokemon going, sorry about that, we'll get him next time. And then someone else just comes in and goes, dead. And he's like, oh God, well, you know, next time, this is the 30th match we've had, but next time we'll get him, 31's a lucky number. Next person, dead. It's, it's a bit weird, you know, it doesn't exactly strike fear in my heart knowing that this poor guy healing his Pokemon for the 90th time. Especially when one of the people who are beating this guy is your and I use this in the most sarcastic of quotation marks, rival Hop also beats him. Now, I haven't mentioned Hop yet, but he is the second main character, I guess you'd say, in Pokemon Sword and Shield, and he's also your best friend, and he's also the brother of the champion of Pokemon in the Gala region, and he wants to be the new champion, and the only person standing in his way is you, but you're all mates, and he wants you to challenge him constantly. So he's always going on about fighting you with his Pokemon. Obviously, it's Pokemon. He's not actually going to... He's always going on about how his legend's going to begin. My legend's going to begin. My legend's going to begin, mate. And he's rubbish. Whoops. So when I'm going up to the first boss for the first time, and I'm just like, oh, I wonder what's gonna happen here. And he walks out with his gym badge going, oh, that was easy. If he can beat him, I'm gonna crush him. At the beginning, you get a choice of three Pokemon. There's a grass one, there's a water one, and a fire one. And whichever one you pick, Hop will choose the thing that's weakest to it. Is he that good that he can choose the one that's weakest to your Pokemon and still just be confident enough to beat you? The hubris! And you just crush him. He's He's terrible. You bloody rubbish, Hop. The new concept in Pokemon Sword and Shield is this thing called Dynamax. So during your Pokemon gym battles, you will be able to take your Pokemon and turn him into a big Pokemon. Big 
big fat Pokemon. It looks very impressive and I was actually quite excited when I saw that. And they have crazy special attacks. The problem is it makes no sense because the gym leaders will always Dynamax their Pokemon last. If it's the last Pokemon, the first thing they'll do is Dynamax. So in turn, the first thing you'll do when they get to the last Pokemon is Dynamax. So now you're both big, which means you're both as powerful as you were before, but now you just look bigger. They never Dynamax their Pokemon in the middle of the battle. It just doesn't happen. It's easy to predict, so it makes zero difference. There's no strategy to it. There's no anything to it. It's just there. So there I am, still optimistic. And then I get 20 hours into the game and nothing's changed. I'm still destroying everyone and I can't help but wonder if the game is too easy. And I really thought the difficulty was going to ramp up at some point, but it just never does. So I had to set my own boundaries. I, I stopped collecting Pokemon because at first I was like, I'm going to be a Pokemon master. I'm going to find all the new Pokemon. And as soon as I find a new Pokemon that I don't have, I'm going to catch him. I just stopped all that because I was scared of becoming stronger. I wanted a challenge. It didn't work. There are still trainers along these routes to get to the gyms. And even just fighting them are enough to level you to the point where the gym battles are too easy. There's no substance to this game at all. The point of Pokemon is to catch Pokemon and to train the Pokemon to fight battles to become the best. The problem is I was the best the second I left my house. At no point in this game was I challenged. And that is my main disappointment with Pokemon. That's the main reason I stopped liking it. A game needs to be challenging. And I know, I know, Pokemon is a game for kids. Kinda, because it's not really. So you can say the difficulty is easy because it was meant for kids. But let's be honest, I've seen six-year-olds play Fortnite like it was no one's business. Like you can put anything in front of kids and they will just, they'll understand it. It can be the most complicated game in the world and kids are smart enough to just figure that stuff out and here's the thing i'm actually new to turn-based rpgs where you level up and become the strongest thing in the world i never played them and i understand why now it's because of pokemon pokemon was the only turn-based game i ever played pokemon blue and my opinion from then on out subconsciously was turn-based games were stupid because it didn't make sense that I hit you and then you hit me and then I hit you and you hit me until one of us dies. And everyone looked at me like I was crazy because there are games like Final Fantasy out there. There are games like Chrono Trigger out there. There are all these amazing turn-based RPGs that aren't that because there are multiple people in the team fighting one big challenging mental boss and they all have their own set of abilities and you can customize and change and swap out and do all this stuff. And since getting to play all these new exciting JRPGs, which are amazing, I then play this and it is. I hit you, you hit me, I hit you, you hit me until one of us dies. And it's not gonna be me because I can just spam my strongest attack and you'll die, easy. And even if you're stronger than me, if you're a fire Pokemon, I'll just use a water Pokemon, dead. Doesn't matter how strong you are. I'm a water Pokemon, you're fire. Water pot out of fire, dead. So the last bit of the game, once you've fought all the gym battles and just killed everyone, is you go to the final tournament and there's a semi-final with all the gym fighters you've already beat. Here's where my problem with Pokemon solidified. That final bit, I took no damage and I killed everyone in one hit unbelievable it's all been building to this moment strongest pokemon trainers in the world fighting each other and here comes me my level 55 gengar just and then all of a sudden there is a big bad pokemon and i have to fight him and somehow part of me was like oh here's the real challenge this will be it now because the pokemon is massive he's gonna be hard the fight you have with him is basically a cutscene because in come the big dogs and they just they just kill him for you but that's not the last boss the last boss is that you finally fight the champion and oh my god finally a challenge it's the only time where i was like oh i have to use strategy <gasps> in a turn-based rpg where strategy is key i actually used it for the first time and then the game was over oh i've ranted a lot look 
I expected more from the first Pokemon on a console. All the games that have jumped to the Switch have had massive improvements. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild completely changed the game with their new addition on the Switch. Mario Odyssey completely changed the way Mario 3D works. And here comes Pokemon, which makes more money than both of those in terms of just like everything. And it's it's a, almost an indie game. Just make the game challenging, make it fun. Make me want to train my Pokemon to fight these gym battles, to become a Pokemon master, to become the champion of Gala. Or I could just get a Gengar and kill everyone because Gengar is mental.